Well, that is certainly clear. You and I are commanded to forgive, period. No exceptions. And I know every time this topic comes up, especially in a group of this size, there is a number of people who want an exception because they will be quick to share the huge hurt that happened to them. You know, an ex-spouse, a family member, parents, whatever it was, may have been recent, may have been a long time ago, but they have been deeply, deeply hurt, and they are absolutely convinced that there is no way that they could ever offer forgiveness to this other person, and so they're looking for an exception. And there is not one. There just is not. This is a solid command of the Lord. You and I must forgive. And so we have to confront it. And so the thing to ask is, all right, how? How am I supposed to forgive little things, but especially big things? And I think I might be able to be some, of some help here to you. I know a little bit about this, not a whole lot, but enough. And I'd like to share with you some things that were helpful to me. First, I think it's really important that we understand what it is the good Lord is asking us to do. He wants us to forgive. He is not asking us to pretend that it never happened, which is something that we sometimes say to people. Like something, something happens, they apologize, and we say, oh, just forget it. It's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not pretending that whatever the incident was has never happened. That's a lie, and there's no sense living a lie. And so you need to understand that it is entirely appropriate if you were hurt by someone. You, it's entirely appropriate for you to set up boundaries, appropriate boundaries, so that you are not hurt again. Supposing you lend somebody some money and they choose not to pay you back. They've broken trust with you. If they, you can forgive them, but if they come to you a week, a month later, and ask for a second loan, you have every right to say to them, no. No, you broke trust with me. I am willing to let you re-earn that trust, perhaps by paying back the first loan, but until you rebuild that trust, I, no, I, I'm not going to loan you any more money. I think the second thing, and for me, the, the biggest turning point in my life in dealing with this was learning to think of wrongs done to us differently. We have a tendency to think of it in terms of debt. So the example I just gave about money, you know, that makes sense. They owed you $100 if that's what you loaned them. It's, it's, you think of that in terms of, well, they, they owe me $100, but if you stop and consider it, you and I tend to think that way about every fault, every, every wrong that is done to us. Someone speaks badly to you in a moment of anger, perhaps says something hurtful to you. And even you'll catch it in our language, we say, well, he owes me an apology. Because we're thinking of it, you know, that we, we sort of assess the hurt that was given to us as some sort of debt. And if you even think about it, when suppose they do come and apologize to you, often the way this works, here's the debt we have sort of established, and they come and they apologize, and we decide, well, it's pretty sincere, and that probably takes us up to about here. So there's a little bit of debt they still owe me, but I'll, I'll let that go. It's as if we're bankers writing off bad debt. And you can appreciate why, then, we don't want to forgive huge hurts, because it's this huge debt they owe us. And even if they come groveling on their hands and knees and beg for our forgiveness in, in the most sincere way possible, as far as we're concerned, all they're filling up is about that much. 
And so there's still all the rest of this. And so we think about that and we say, well, there, there's, there's no way. There is no way this debt is ever going to be repaid. I have been hurt too badly, therefore I cannot forgive. I would suggest to you that this is not a helpful way of thinking about wrongs done to us. Because I don't know anybody who thinks this way and is able to forgive big things. It's also why I think they're so reluctant to forgive even little slights, because they never really feel, especially if it's the same person, they kind of feel like, I keep giving, I keep giving, I keep giving to this person that hurts me. Third thing, it's worth reminding ourselves that forgiveness is about choices, not about feelings. The good Lord is not saying that he wants us to feel like we should forgive. He wants us to choose to forgive. In much the same way that the commandment is love your neighbor, it doesn't say like your neighbor. Like is a feeling. There are lots of people in the world, I'm sure, that you like and enjoy being around, and there are people that you just don't like, and that's okay. That's your personal preference. But the good Lord tells us to love them all, and love is a choice. You may not enjoy being around somebody, but you can still make choices to show them love and respect. Forgiveness is like that. We have to choose to forgive. It's almost like we have to get it out of our hearts and up into our heads. So let me put this together for you with a, a simple example, uh, one that I, I suspect most of us can appreciate, and, and, and not a big hurt, but um, it, it applies to any hurt. Let's suppose you go up to the store and you are treated badly. Bad service, they disrespect you, you feel like you got cheated somehow in whatever way, it doesn't, doesn't matter, you just, you just feel like it went badly and you were hurt. So consider first what it is likely that you might do. I mean, if you're, if you're like me, um, you know, one of the things that I do is I'm walking out of the store, I want to replay it in my mind because I just got hurt. And so I run this film over again and then I run it again and then I run it again and I keep running it. And and, and when we do it, I don't know, perhaps you do this too, you start adding in things, the things that you should have said to that clerk when at that moment. And then we tell other people. We, you know, we, we, get, we get home, how was your trip? Oh, and then we start in again. And for those of us that, you know, use social media at some point, we are going to warm up our ten fingers and we're going to let have we're going to really go after this, this company who treated me so badly. I just pause here to ask you what it is you, what, 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 what do you get out of all that? Aside from perhaps increased blood pressure, what do you get out of that? Because I think what, you, what we think we're getting out of it is we're, we're getting some repayment of the debt. We're, we're getting vengeance. We're getting revenge. And that's how we're trying to fill up, because it's a company. They're never going to apologize to us. They're never going to make this up to us. But we really don't get anything out of it, except we spend hours, days, sometimes years. I have been with people who have driven by, been with them in the car, and they point to the sign of the store that offended them six, seven years ago, and they say, that place. All we have done is just burdened ourselves with this grudge. But what's the alternative? It happens. They treat you badly, absolutely. You walk out of the store, you're, you're upset about that. That's perfectly understandable. You may, in that moment, say, you know, I, I, I don't need to put up with this. I think I will choose not to ever come back here, or at least not to come back here for a while. Maybe, maybe somewhere down the line, I'll, 
I'll, I'll give them a second chance. But for right now, I'm going to do my shopping someplace else. That, that makes sense. That's appropriate boundaries. But the forgiveness part is that you say, okay, I didn't it happened, I did not like it, I have, I have made sure that in some way perhaps it will not happen again, and I'm done. I'm just done with it. I am not going to let this incident drag, you know, hold me back for the next couple hours, days, weeks, months, years. It is water that has already gone under the bridge and has gone down. And so when I, as I'm walking to the car and I want to start replaying the incident in my head, I choose to say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to think about something else. And when I get home and someone says, you know, well, how was the trip at the store? I'm going to choose to say, actually, not very well. Uh, I just didn't... It, it didn't go very well. It's not worth going into the details, but I don't know that I'll go back there. And that's it. And yeah, maybe it's worthwhile getting on social media, writing a review, a factual review for, for the company. Perhaps that would be helpful to them to know that their, one of their employees did not do what they wanted. But I'm not going to make it emotional, and I'm not going to do it in all caps. I'm just going to maybe maybe just... Just be helpful in that way. But otherwise, it's over. It's just over. And if it comes back into my mind, or someone reminds me of it somehow, they tell me a story, and it reminds me of that moment, I'm going to just, no, 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 I'm done with that. I'm done with that. I just choose to constantly realize it's done. Now, that probably to most of you sounds doable if it's the local store. But for those of you that did walk in here with some grave hurt, perhaps from long ago, I appreciate that this suddenly may sound to you, well, that's easy for you to say. But I would still suggest to you that you can do it. Because if you're not thinking, like in, the, in the, the store example, if you're not thinking, well, that store owes me, if, that's, if you're not thinking about it in that way at all, it's just something unfortunate that happened. And I'll do what I need to do to handle it, and then I'm going to let it go. That same thing can be done with e even terrible look at it, you set up appropriate boundaries to make sure you are not hurt again in the same way, but the same person. That makes sense. If there's a lesson to be learned from it, maybe you learn that lesson, that would be good. But then, if there's, and if there's anything to be done, like if there's a situation that you need to grieve over, you know, the loss of a marriage, something like that, sure, you do all of that. But then, it's done. It's just done. Because consider the two alternatives. One alternative is something that you wouldn't perhaps think of it this way, but many of, I know lots of people that do this every morning. They sort of figuratively get up in the morning and they pick up this bag, this knapsack of all these grudges. Some big, some small, but they've got them. And they lug this thing around with them all day long. Because it's important to have it with them because when they see the sign of the store, they want to be like, oh, yeah, that, that grudge. And they need to have it ready. When they see the person that wronged them, they want to make sure they've got that grudge with them. I mean, can you just picture this? Just walking around life, just being dragged backwards by all this stuff that happened in the past. And I would just encourage you to consider, well, what's it like to walk through life without that thing? Which might be hard. I know people, they've been picking up that, that knapsack of grudges most of their life. I don't know that they'll know what to do the morning they get up and leave it sit there. And then the other thing is the very last line of the Gospel reading for today. Jesus describes what the Master does to the unforgiving servant and says, 
And so my heavenly Father will do to you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. I, 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 I just find that chilling. And as hard as it may be for me to change my thinking about forgiveness, and as hard as it may be for me to constantly have to, to, have to take these emotions that come up and, and just remind myself, no, I, I, I'm done with this. I have forgiven this. I have, I have dealt with this. I need to do it. Because I certainly don't want to get to the moment of judgment and say to God, I need your forgiveness. Because I know all the horrible things that I have done over the course of my life. I know how much I have sinned. I know my debt to you. It's huge. Would you forgive me? I don't want the good Lord to say, sure, I'd love to forgive you. What about that knapsack of grudges you brought with you? Don't want to be the second servant. And I would certainly hope that you would not either. If this is a tough issue for you, and it is for many, I know, could I, cons- could I encourage you to really give this some thought? I mean thought, not, not, not heart. Give it some thought. This can be done. Despite all the times that you have said to people, I'll never be able to forgive them, that's not true. That is not true. You and I can forgive those who wrong us from our hearts.